Hi, Paul Yaffe here, Paul Yaffe Originals, home of Bagger Nation. Uh, and today I wanna talk to you guys about installing a longer custom fender on your Lowrider or Lowrider S model using our inverted fork adapters. Um, once you purchase this kit, there's a sport fender, which is this fender here, much longer than stock. There's also one of Thickey that's even longer. Uh, you can choose from either one of those if you want full coverage uh, on your tire. Um, there seems to be a little uh, confusion about getting these fenders to bolt on and center over the tire because you have such a long rear fender, the distance from the bolt area to the end of the fender allows uh, some movement. So I just wanna kinda help you with that. So the first thing you're gonna do is when you unwrap the package, uh, you're gonna have a pair of our inverted fork adapters. These bolt on the front end uh, at like the lower knuckle down here, right where the stock fender uh, bolts on. Uh, they go on each side uh, and they mount at these two points. Um, these two points, or I should say these four points because there's two on each side. Th these are a cast part, this what I call a knuckle on the bottom of your inverted fork. And these surfaces that are here have rough casting lines on them. They've also been powder coated. So there's no way that those four surfaces are parallel to each other. There's no way they're all on the same plane. So what's gonna happen when you take your inverted fork adapters and you bolt them here to those four mounting points, if they're not exactly even, what you're gonna see is these adapters are gonna tweak. I'm exaggerating how much they're gonna tweak. They're gonna tweak very little. But that little bit of tweak, that little bit of twist, if, it's, if these bolts where the adapters bolt to the fender, if those are already tight and torqued, when these tweak, right, they're gonna make that fender, right, if these tweak, that fender's gonna move side to side. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna bolt these on first, tighten them, slide the thing in, bolt it on your forks, and you're gonna pull the fender over, it's gonna touch your tire, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to avoid that. Basically, you're just gonna put everything together loosely, slide it in place, then you'll torque these four points, then you'll center the fender while it's loose, and then you'll tighten the fender ports. So uh, what you're gonna need, a uh, little variety of half inch wrenches. I've chosen my favorite half inch wrenches, and you're gonna need a Torx bit uh, to undo the stock button heads that hold your current fender uh, to your fork. So uh, you can go ahead and remove uh, your front fender and retain the, the four screws that hold the fender on and then I'm going to loosely assemble our uh, inverted fork adapters uh, to our custom sport fender. In the kit, you'll get the hardware you need, you'll get a pair of spacers that go in between uh, the adapters and the fender. Um, you get a few different, you get a couple shop stickers. Uh, these stickers are actually uh, made in the image of the uh, rock guards of the debris guards and they're meant to be put on the debris guards uh, to dress them up it's a really cool uh, look if you like them use them that's why they're in the box uh, they dress up those debris guards really nice and give them kind of a performance look uh, numbers always face towards the fender Simple like that, slide your bolts through. Actually, I should use some flat washers on those. Flat washer, lock washer. So I'm just going to finger tight all of this so it goes on loosely. I'll snug it before we actually put it on the bike. Uh, and when I say snug it, I mean very lightly. Just take a little of the slack off so 
Oh, uh, you're not having to turn the wrenches so much. Because once you get it on the bike, the bolts are a little harder to reach. So what I'm going to do is just I'm just taking most of the slack out, but I'm still loose. Because I want that fender to be able to fully pivot. Now that I'm set up like this, your adapters are basically attached to the fender. That's all good. So we're going to take the fender with the brackets on it, and it basically just slides right onto the bike. It slides right in place where the mounts are. So now I'm going to take my four button heads. each one started I would suggest uh, when you're in the final assembly phase that you uh, use a little Loctite on these I'm not doing that here I'm not doing that here because uh, this fender is not staying on here obviously so you install these at the four mounting points Got it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put the fender centered, you know, where I want it, put my fingers underneath it. I'm going to tighten these four screws, but I've got my play is in here. So if those things move a little bit, they don't tweak the fender. Now, this fender, right, still loose, even though these mounting points are tight, right? But see how it's hanging right now? See, even the fender is touching the tire. Now, the idea is to get this thing centered on here so it's sitting centered, right, over the tire. Now, one thing about putting a longer, this long of a fender on this bike is when you turn to right or left lock, You've got a lot of distance between your mounting point and the tip of the fender, and there's twist here in the inverted fork. They're able to twist a little bit, especially when you're going to full right or full left lock. So it's possible, you know, that if you're turning the bike to full left in a parking lot and you're backing it up, you know, this might, the fender might move over. I mean, I can, you can see, you know, I can move that fender. It has some flex in it. Um, any long fender will. So you may get some parking lot contact or whatever, but if you set the bike up right with the, or set the fender up right with everything centered and tight when you're riding and through all the normal use, you won't have any uh, contact or rubbing. What I like to do, I like to, to establish my centering um, with spacers. So what I use for spacers is usually just some nuts. So depending on the tire width and how much room I have, I'm looking at this and this could probably take some 3 8 nuts. So I'm gonna go grab four 3 8 nuts out of my bolt bin, uh, and I'm gonna put them in here as spacers. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I grabbed uh, four 3 8 nuts. That's what I wanna use for my spacers. And what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at the fenders leaning this way a little bit. So I'm definitely gonna wanna put a spacer up here. This one looks like it needs a little more, so I'm gonna put it in sideways. I want to get it. Whoop! I want to get it up on the side of the fender. God, these aren't really even big enough. They don't seem like they want more. So if I go in sideways, I'm pretty good there. And I'm going to look at my rear spacing. That looks like it wants to come the other way. So 
I'm gonna put my other nut in here. So, so now I've got the fender offset the way I want it to be. Um, it's looking, looking pretty centered and I've got it pulled over. It was leaning that way a little bit, so I've got it pulled over a little farther this way. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna tighten my hardware. The idea there being that I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna tighten the fender in the position that I want it. Good torque. Super fun to reach. This is why I grab a little assortment of half inch wrenches so I can reach whatever I need to. Okay. Same on the other side. That's all tight and good. Now I'm going to push the fender over a little bit, release my nuts from where they're spacing. And if you look at this, look down the center of that, dead on. I've got super great spacing on both sides of my fender. Everything's solid. That's how you install a long fender with our inverted fork fender adapters on your lowrider s or lowrider st hope that uh, helps uh, hope that uh, works now one thing i will say is that every fork is going to be different right so every set of these knuckles that are cast and powder coated are going to be a little different you know you may if, if the fender has an extreme lean you may want to pull it all the way over to one side and then torque those fasteners and then let it go and it'll center if that makes sense right so um, you just have to play around uh, a little bit, compensating for the natural uh, unevenness, let's say, of the fork. Harley doesn't experience this problem because their fenders, one, have an inch and a half of spacing <laughs> underneath them, so they're, they're nowhere near uh, the tire like our nice-fitting, glove-like uh, custom fit. Uh, and their fenders aren't long, so they're only this, they're like a little potato chip, so they have no tweak uh, in them uh, whatsoever. Uh, and if they do not sit even or whatever, the fender's so short, there's no deflection. Uh, there's no length for you to realize uh, that long deflection. So when you're getting into custom fenders, that's why they call it custom, it takes a little uh, attention, get everything set up right. But once you've got it set up right, thing looks great and uh, you'll have a nice long uh, life of usage uh, with our uh, super light fenders. Thanks for watching. We are still uh, talking about using our inverted fork adapters to mount our custom long fenders on lowrider S and ST models uh, that have uh, inverted front ends needing our inverted fork adapters. Um, in the other videos you might have watched, we were talking about the length of the fenders. This is our longest fender. It's called the Thicky, and I'm still having a little problems getting this thing adjusted to be dead center right where I want it, even after I use the tips that I showed you uh, in the install video. So what I'm going to do, this will be an added tip, is I'm going to take a stepped drill bit, uh, one of my unibits, and I am going to open up the four mounting holes in the fender one size. I'm going to put this in and open them up one size, and I'm going to do the same thing in the four mounting holes uh, on the steel brackets. So I'm going to open up 
uh, these eight holes. And what that's going to do is give me just a little bit more play when I'm adjusting the fender to get it right where I want it. Um, these bolts, if you see, went in really snug. You can see how they, yeah, when I put them in, the shoulders won't even go through. And then here too, they're going in, re these are cut really nice. So I want to open them up just a little bit. And what that's going to give the fenders a little more, just a 30 seconds of an inch to slide around a little bit, which will give me all the adjustment I need by the time I get to the very end. So uh, I'm going to drill these. I don't, you, you know how to open up holes. Uh, no big deal. Uh, and then I'll show you the results. Thanks. So what I did was just open up the 5 16th holes to 11 30 seconds on the brackets and the fender on this particular really long thicky fender. Um, and that just gave me a little bit more shimmy room uh, before I uh, torqued everything down. And now if you look, Phil, uh, the front fender is dead on. Lots of space on both sides. Uh, fender sits nice and centered uh, over the tire. Uh, and that was just a little additional. Uh, you know, if you're, if it's just not coming into adjustment, sometimes when a painter paints your fender, they'll get paint inside the holes. It's always good to clean them out. Uh, and I know that the, uh, on our uh, fender brackets, on our steel uh, inverted fork adapter brackets, uh, they're laser cut. Uh, and sometimes it's just a really tight fit. Uh, so just giving everything a little bit more room makes adjusting it that much easier. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for choosing our products. Have a great day.